I'm sure it's like you said, it's this arms race. And so then the computers or AI will figure out how to generate a convergence of vision, uh, fake the convergence of vision so that we can no longer find that out. They'll, they'll fake the vertical scanning that humans do and we can no longer detect there. And then they'll figure out how to make sure the pupil or iris aren't changing in size as much as they're doing now. Ultimately, are we going to need to be looking at actually an individual human and saying, okay, this is your heart rate. So we know that you're the one speaking, or this is your gaze, as opposed to just a human, a generic human gaze? Person identification is a completely broad research topic. We haven't invested our resources yet. We are just looking at the problem as fake or real detection. For heart rate, it is actually, it is very unique to humans. So if you have the actual heart rate that is measured, that heart rate and how it is changing can be strong signal to identify a person, identify that like it is Ilke that is talking. But finding that heart rate exactly from the video is not really possible because there are so many things that are changing. Even if you are looking at my face with no occlusions, no lightning conditions, the camera parameters may add something, the illumination may add something, like something passing by my window creating a shadow of me may uh, affect the PPG signal. So exactly finding that unique signature per person from video is very hard. So you're not looking into water markings, for example, in an individual human or identifying an individual human and then saying, validating that that is the person whose video it is. We are finding that real humans collectively have PG signals that is co consistent on, on their faces. Okay. I have heard some people claim that, did you see the movie Maverick, the new one that came out? Not yet. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's got Tom Cruise and a bunch of folks in it. I've heard it claimed that, well, we're going to find out later that that was all generated video of actors. And I'm just wondering now, this is, you know, just sort of a wild claim right now, but it just makes me think, is that something as a tool could be used negative or positive, but could we generate humans that we recognize? I don't want to see Tom Cruise anymore because he has so many deep fakes and we have been looking at all of those deep fakes so much that <laughs> maybe a movie is nothing novel for me because I keep seeing Tom Cruise anyway. So anyway, generation of deepfakes is a huge topic and we want to do it responsibly. And it is possible to create a whole movie just by deepfakes if we have enough reference and images and videos of that person. Not for 2D movies, but actually for 3D. We have a story to tell here. We were doing 3D capture, 3D uh, volumetric reconstruction that is used in AR and uh, augmented and virtual reality movies which actually premiered in Venice Film Festival, Tribeca Film Festival, etc. So we had those 3D productions in Intel, and one of them is an AR series. So for that AR series, because of COVID, the actor couldn't come to the huge studio for volumetric capture. We said, okay, like take a video of yourself at home with the script so that we can actually make a 3D deepfake of you using the 2D footage that you give us and using the earlier 3D footages that we took uh, that we reconstructed of him and we actually did that face retargeting which is like taking the mouth hand gestures like facial gestures etc from 2d video and applying it to the 3d capture of him that mimics him in 3d so if we did this for that little air series very quickly then it, it is definitely possible to do it in in 2d which is a little bit easier to do for the whole movie 